Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, your programming friend from YouTube. I hope you have subscribed to my channel yet, in case not, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel. I hope you have done it now. So let's go ahead and move forward. Now you know about Mocha, now let's move into one more last topic. Now this topic is essential and after that we're going to move into the installation part of MongoDB. Now uh, both uh, installation is going to be on both systems, uh, Windows and on Macintosh as well. So let's go ahead and start here. Now in case you remember, in the very start of the series I mentioned that MongoDB is a database and MongoDB is also a company. Now as a company, MongoDB is offering too much of the services. And usually the most famous one is MongoDB, the database that we all use, but it has a lot to offer. Although we are not going to be using most of them, but still we should be aware what are there, what are the things which are available for us that MongoDB is offering. So let's talk about it. Now, all these offerings are actually divided into two basic parts, the regular one, which everybody sees, and the one which is fairly new, which is known as Stitch. So we're going to talk about both of them. So first and foremost here, we can see we have Community Edition or the Enterprise. This is our actual database on which we will be working. This is the whole meat part and this is why the MongoDB is so much popular. So they comes in two flavors, the Community Edition, which means totally free. Uh, just install it on your any of your instance, your computer, uh, maybe on some servers, wherever you like, it's totally absolutely free. There is also an Enterprise Edition for big scale applications. Probably you don't want to mess around Around with all those stuffs they also provide enterprise additions so that can be helpful for some other people not for us as of now now there is also one service known as Atlas now Atlas is like MongoDB in cloud you just make an account you just click on few buttons and somebody has prepared a database for you in the cloud it is easier for manage and everything but of course you have to pay a price now initially atlas is free uh, for up to some scale or some level and after that you have to pay for them now the good thing is you can just test around your application and even the free is too much generous here because uh, even the free comes up with so much of the data that you won't be complaining now there is also a mobile edition of mongodb Let's just say you want to build an application in which you store everything on the mobile itself. You don't want to connect onto any third party databases or maybe you don't want to connect to internet itself. MongoDB has a service offering especially for mobile as well. This is not a part of our series as of now, but maybe later on we can just touch it a little bit. Okay. Now these are the basic, on the first row, these are the basic services that are offered as a database itself. In order to support these databases, further down MongoDB also supports some of the tools that can help you to become a data scientist as well. A lot of people believe that data scientist means uh, firing a Python shell, uh, writing some of the machine learning algorithms. No, that's a fancy term. In fact, moving on to that part is way like upscale one. Even with the just database, you can collect so much of the data and you can put some of the analytics on it and can do so much on that exactly why there are some tools offered by relational databases and so is the case for MongoDB. The Oops Manager here is just a managerial or editorial thing for MongoDB which help you to manage all the things without even worrying about what technology was used for MongoDB. This is usually held and this is usually used by uh, database administrators. Uh, we won't be using that because we will be writing code for that. We won't be managing it for graphical users. There are also a few things like by connectors and MongoDB charts. Again, strictly for data scientists or data analytics people who want to figure out why sales is going down, why sales is going up and how we can keep that trend and similar stuff like that. So this is also not a part of our series, but yes, MongoDB has these things to offer. Now there is one very essential thing about MongoDB. Most of the time we will be writing code and we'll be seeing everything through terminals or through command lines or through code view. But there are some GUIs available as well. By the GUI, I simply means graphical user interface. The one very famous being offered by MongoDB itself is Compass. Now, I probably will touch a little bit about the Compass as well. But there is other thing being offered by MongoDB, not exactly like by MongoDB, but third party services is RoboMongo. 
Now, I have seen that in industries, although Compass is offered directly by MongoDB, but people are a big fan of RoboMongo. Now, RoboMongo recently have changed their name as Robo3T. It's exactly same, it's absolutely free, but there are some name changing going on quite a lot in the world of RoboMongo. Let me just visit on this website. So now they are calling RoboMongo as Robo3T. Of course, they are having uh, free and the paid edition. The Studio 3T is the paid one, and the Robo3T is your RoboMongo and is absolutely free. The best thing that I like about this MongoDB GUI is it's a cross-platform and it's available for almost every operating system that is most popular one. So uh, right now, I guess it is downloading for the Mac one. If I click on this one, I guess it is going to, there we see, Windows, Mac, and Linux. So it's available for all of the one, however you want to go and download that. Now, there are a couple of more things about Studio 3T as well. Uh, this also used to know with different name, but now it is going on with a different name. And again, if you see the graphical user interface is pretty awesome, everybody loves it. And also the proof is here that RoboMongo is one of the most favorite one for the developers, uh, just below the Facebook Rock DB and uh, Google Level DB. So yeah, whole story short, it's the popular one and you should know a little bit about it. And uh, it's just a graphical user interface to see what's there in your database, what objects are stored, what documents are stored, and that's pretty much it. So this is the first umbrella of MongoDB. MongoDB has recently started another set of services known as Stitch. Now, if you have any time heard from me or from any other developer about Firebase, it is almost similar to that. I wouldn't be calling it exact replica of that because there are definitely some subtle differences, but this is almost similar to Firebase. And it allows you to have things like uh, serverless query API. Doesn't matter uh, what application you're using, mobile or web or uh, Android or iOS, you can put a query. And just like you do in Firebase, you can put up queries through the APIs of MongoDB using the serverless query API. There are also serverless functions in it in case you have worked with Amazon AWS anytime. You might know about Lambdas there. It is almost exactly same, a kind of a replica of Lambdas in the world of MongoDB. There are certain DB triggers available here as well. DB trigger simply means if there is a document being created, do something like this or do something that. So these are just DB triggers. Also, real-time sync, everybody knows about them. The chat application have made them so much popular, especially the Firebase. So exactly same thing which is available in Firebase, real-time chattings and all those real-time sync, it is exactly available here as well. I have given you a link in this here, so you can just go to the link, just type it there, mongodb.com slash cloud slash stitch. And by the way, stitch is not S-T-I-C-H, it is S-T-I-T-C-H. You can see it here. So make sure you don't make a mistake. This is the stitch here. They are very fancy with the name here. So we can see we have got uh, build better apps faster with MongoDB stitch services. So they have uh, query anywhere, stitch functions, triggers, uh, mobile sync. They are going with all the way along here and they are pretty powerful services. Although maybe we'll be touching it a little bit, but our goal entirely is on MongoDB and the core MongoDB. But again, it is a service worth mentioning. I wanted to show you that yes, MongoDB is just not alone a database. It offers so much of these things. And uh, you can also look for the resources like solution. What are the other things available? You can see they have got a huge list here that they are offering even in the cloud. And here's the Atlas that I was talking about. Pretty much easy and to be honest, a very, very fun service. Recently, they have acquired a couple of people like MLab and now they are becoming amazing, amazing, awesome. So uh, that's the whole story short about uh, MongoDB and its services. You got to know now that it's a big service, but the one we are uh, totally worried about in this series is a community edition of MongoDB means just the database one. Little bit touching is going to be there for Mongo, uh, RoboMongo as well, but definitely later on. And of course, Stitch is something that you should be aware of. Maybe in the future, you might need that. So that's the whole story. Quite a lot of theoretical things, but they are all essential of uh, MongoDB. In the next video, we're going to do installation of MongoDB, and I highly recommend to watch them very closely because if you mess around with the installation, you won't be able to follow up from that point onwards. So go ahead. First thing you have to do is 
hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. And second thing, uh, follow me up on the installation. I will post both installation for Windows as well as for Macintosh as well. That's it for this video. I hope you are enjoying. Make sure you share these videos with your friends as well. And I'm going to catch you up in the next video.